Hey, it's Captain Chris Myers of Central Florida Sight Fishing Charters and Orlando Fly Casting. I'm going to show you today the basic fly fishing stroke. Now, if you're totally new to fly fishing, a couple things you need to understand. One is we're using the weight of this fly line to bend this long, flexible rod. So if we don't have some fly line outside the tip of our rod, we're not going to be able to make a cast because this is what's making our rod bend. In conventional fishing, we're using the weight of the lure the uh, hook and the sinker, whatever it is you have tied on to be able to bend your rod and cast. Here in fly fishing, we can use things as light as this piece of yarn, which you can never cast on conventional tackle without adding a sinker, but we're using the weight of this fly line. And what we're trying to do is create a loop that unrolls off the tip of this rod. This rod's going to bend, and the bend of that rod is going to help form a loop which is going to unroll a candy cane shaped loop. It unrolls back behind us. That's our back stroke. And it's going to unroll out in front of us. That's our forward stroke. And we either let it fall in the water and begin fishing, or we go right into a second back stroke and another forward stroke. And we can use that to move the fly around and do some other things. But it's the weight of this fly line that's bending our rod. The other important thing we need to know is the tip of this rod needs to travel back and forth in a straight line in order to achieve those loops. The narrower the loop, the more aerodynamic it is, the more energy efficient it is, and the easier it will be for you to cast out long distances. So you want to move that rod tip back and forth in as straight a line as possible, and that requires you to keep a firm wrist and not bend your wrist. If I begin to bend my wrist, the only thing this rod can do is go back and forth in the windshield wiper motion, which is the complete opposite of the straight line we're looking for. Then new fly casters need to uh, discover how hard is it do we need to cast? How fast do I need to move this rod? And what seems to work for me is I imagine I have a big long paintbrush here. I'm going to dip it in some paint. I'm going to take that paint and I want all of it to fling up here to this target up and behind me. And if I had a paintbrush, we would go so it's slow, faster, 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 stop. And it goes super fast at the end and all the paint flings up there. If you come up too slow, everything dribbles down your hand. Come up too slow with the fly rod, the line never gets going. If I come up super fast from the get-go, if I just stomp on the gas and go on a full speed from the beginning, a lot of the paint sprays up here, a little bit goes back there. Same thing will happen with your fly line. It'll go around in a big giant circle really fast and it'll end up that way and then fall in a pile if you let it go. So we want to come up just fast enough that it goes back, 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 stop. And I'm going to come to an instant stop and freeze, and there's going to be a pause while that line unrolls behind me. When I'm new to fly casting, if I'm not looking back there, you're not going to have any idea when that line is unrolled. You're going to be guessing. Guessing usually doesn't work out in our favor when it comes to making good fly casts. So turn your head, look back at that cast, Watch it unroll. The second it's unrolled, we're going to come forward with the exact same speed and power. We're going to stop going out and slightly down. So the cast unrolls out a couple feet above the water, falls down on my target. So it's a backstroke, a forward stroke, then I'm going to follow through. You can check out my video on the five principles, the five rules of fly casting that are very important. There's five different ones. You learn those, then when your cast isn't going right, you can figure out which one you probably violated and improve your cast. So I'm going to go over here to the water. I'm going to show you what this basic cast looks like. And I want you to try it. And I think you'll find that you'll be well on your way to becoming a fly fisherman and fly caster. For the basic cast, you want to start with at least 20 to 25 feet of line outside your tip. So you have enough weight to bend or load your fly rod. I'm going to start with my rod all the way down at the water. I'm going to pinch the line underneath my index finger. You don't even need this hand for right now. If I start with my rod up here, I've already gone through over six feet of my casting stroke. Now I'm going to have to add a whole lot of power in a very short uh, stroke. So we want to start with our rod tip all the way down. I'm going to be watching the end of my fly line. As soon as the end of that fly line clears the water, that's when I'm going to do my speed up and stop stroke. So I'm going to go faster, 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 speed up and stop, out, follow through. Now when I'm first starting off, I always want to be turning around to look at my back cast to make sure it's going up into the air and unrolling. That candy cane shaped loop is unrolling up this way with the fly up higher than the tip of the rod or at least level with the tip of the rod. What we do not want to do is this cast 
which stops going down into the water or ground behind us. The only way that gets there is if I'm breaking my wrist and I see this big gap here. So it's very important that we keep our wrist firm. At the end of my stroke, you'll see the gap was about the same as when I started. So I'm gonna lift up, 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 up. It's cleared, go up and back, pause, out, follow through. Now, it's also very important that our delivery stroke has two parts. It has a stop going out and slightly down and then a follow through to the water. To demonstrate, it goes out, follows it all down. What I do not want to do is come up and go down and now everything fell in a pile right here off my rod tip because that's exactly where I told it to go. An important rule of fly casting is the fly and the fly line only go the direction the tip was traveling at the moment that it stopped. So if my tip was traveling down in the back, down in the front, you can see I don't have the loop that we're looking to create and I'm just falling in a pile behind me and falling in a pile in front of me and I'm never going to be able to achieve any more distance. So we want to create those loops. So it goes up in the back, out, so I'm pausing just long enough to, to almost completely straighten out, and then I follow through back to the water and I'm in my ready position. Up, out, follow through. What I want you to notice is the tip of this rod has to go in a straight line. If I hold with my thumb on top, or I'm gonna recommend you hold it. If my thumb goes back and forth in a straight line, and here's a perfectly straight line to check, so must the rod tip. If my thumb comes off the straight line, either this manner, this manner, this manner, whatever way it is, you're not going to get those tight uh, aerodynamic loops and you're not going to be able to get the cast that you're looking for in most situations. So watch how far my hand moves. So my hand is moved from all the way down here all the way back to here. So my hand is well behind my body. A lot of beginner fly casters simply hold their hands, hold their arms still and move their wrist back and forth and lock everything right here. And for a little bitty short cast, I can get away with it and still create a loop. But problem becomes when I want to make longer and longer casts, I, I really start to have a problem when I'm casting with my wrist. So learn to cast by keeping your wrist firm. Out, follow through. So I'm going to up, out, follow through. So for your basic stroke, start down low, look at your line, up in the back, out in the front, follow through and you'd be well on your way to being a fly caster.